We have Martino Puccio. Follow Martino on Twitter. He likes to tweet. He's a big tweet Twitter kind of guy. Lot, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a contributor for Syria Betting at the Athletic. Uh, he's a host and producer of the award-winning State of Play Pod. I don't. Why didn't you ever invite me on these things, man? You're doing all this. <laughs> you want to? You want to? You want to talk about uh, second league French players, Frank? You can if you want. Uh, I'm down. I'll talk about we we I know love... Frank has a hard on for the French soccer team, the overrated French soccer team, right? Yes, uh, and, and French fr- <laughs> French women. We'll get into Montreal later. Uh, the, the best <laughs> numero uno we say but, French, uh, <laughs> Francisco that's what you're going to call him now no, Francisco no, no, no. Francisco <laughs> but uh, Martino Martino is a huge soccer fan we'll mm. jump right into him Martino I will ask you though who is the favorite right now to win the Euro Cup so betting wise or just like oh. public favorite betting wise England moved back to the favorite again they've been the favorite like since the odds came out wait um, really yeah because I yeah, they're always it, overhyped. not really sure why. Um, I don't even remember the last time they made a final. I think the last time they made a final in international tournaments when they won it in 66 for the World Cup. So they always fall short. It's just a it's a hype thing. Um, yeah, it's dumb. Spain are actually ahead of Italy, and then it's Italy and then Belgium. Um, that's just with the odds, it's just really about your path to it. Because Belgium is that because either. Italy played badly yeah. against, yeah. against no, it's a path that, that makes sense. It's because Italy yeah. plays Belgium, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's literally what it is. And um now that De Bruyne's playing, I'm sure they've shifted. Um, because they were just obviously like lying about it. And then England only plays it, the only game that they're gonna play outside of England is this game this weekend. Um they win this, the semifinals at Wembley, the finals at Wembley, and they would have played every single game. So that's mostly why it's like that. And then they have the easier side of the bracket. But overall, if you talk to people who watch it and have seen every game, they say Italy's the favorite right now because no one's played better than them um, in general. Where the score lines, you watch the games itself. Um, you know, England hasn't conceded a goal, but they've looked worse than Italy has. So, I mean, it, it all depends on who you talk to, you know. What's your biggest concern with Italy? I don't really have one. I, I, th- I think it's maybe just health. Of certain players, I just there's no real weakness within the team. Um, I think it's just Stri- great striking. Weakness. You you don't think scoring is still a bit yeah. of a weakness? No. I mean, you could say that for every team to an extent, they, but it's just hard to score in this sport. It's yeah, not, it's it not is. like it's if you're creating chances, that's all that matters. If you're getting open yeah. looks in basketball, you're fine. They're gonna fall eventually. Um, they had like 12 shots in the first half against Austria. Just some of them weren't as quality. Hit the post on some of them. Um, and those games drag out. The longer like teams that aren't as good like Austria get deeper into some of these games, they're just going to be more defensive. And that's kind of what's happened. But they'll be fine in my opinion. Um, Is Chiellini playing tomorrow? He should be, yeah. Okay. He was training prior to the last game, but they didn't want to push it because um, they saw this matchup. Because Lukaku's never beaten them in Serie A. So that's like a big thing. He's wow, He's probably nice. the one, the best defender that knows how to play him. Because all these guys just get overpowered by him. And it's funny that like a 36, 37 year olds <laughs> want to handle this beast. I mean, he's just ridiculous. So of these like lesser teams, right? The Switzerland, the Ukraine, uh, the underdog teams, who's the best one out of the I guess one Denmark. Of the four Denmark's other teams? The best. Denmark. Denmark's the and they best, and yeah. they squeak kind of squeaked into the uh to the round they of sixteen, did. right? I mean I mean, I think they rebounded well when your captain dies, you know, like on the field. Yeah, like, that. like he was literally dead, and then they yeah. revived him with the defibrillator. Um, they played well against Belgium. I mean, Belgium mm-hmm. brought off the best midfielder in the world in the second yeah. half. Like that's the, like that's the difference. Um, but they played them very tight. They scored all those goals against Russia. They took a dump on Wales, like to mm-hmm. – to keep it as professional as possible. I mean, like, it was 4 nothing. It could have been worse. Um, and then they have another good matchup. I think the Czech Republic's been lucky, too. They're not even, like, that good like that. They won off a red card because Matthias Delecht, who plays for Juve, got that red card in the 55th minute. It, you're, the game's a lot easier that way. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I just think they're past the best. I, I think the Ukraine's pretty good, too. I mean – they're, it's going to be tough. I think England finally concedes a goal, but never you never truly know in some of these games. I thought Martino, they would have lost tell the, 
Tell the mm-hmm. audience a little bit about what happened with England because they had a rough stretch for a long time. They were one of the premier teams in Europe for, for, for ages. And then over the last 20 years, they've really struggled to get back to where um, they used to be. And now it seems like their fans are excited again. So what's the, what's the difference now? Who's, who's like the player to watch or who is the, is their um, there coaching better? I mean, what's going on? I think it's just the, um just better de- youth development in general um a lot of the, a lot of their players they never really used to develop when the premier league started getting really good they were just buying foreign players it wasn't yeah. it wasn't a ton of english guys yeah. and then whatever english guys they had um playing they were really good but it wasn't just a full team like they didn't even make the euros in 2008 they missed out on that when they had a bunch of really good players like beckham lampard gerard and they had all those guys. They didn't make it. They usually suck in the Euros. This yeah. this yeah. year was the first year they won their opening game. Like we're talking about, we're going back to like 1960 or whenever it started at that point. I think it was 1960. Um, and they're just genuinely overhyped and overrated. A lot of it's just the coverage over here and their coverage mm-hmm. out there, the way they promote everything. Like their league wasn't the best league in the world until like the mid 2000s is when it started shifting that way. Um and honestly, they've had fortunate paths. They didn't play anyone really that great in the 2018 World Cup. They were the, the best team they ended up playing was Croatia. It had like Tunisia. They played Panama. It like it wasn't crazy tough on them. Um, but now I think this is a much better team. And Jack Grealish is definitely the guy um, that's probably lesser known throughout the uh, you know more I guess common fans. I guess you could say casual fans. That kind of watch, but now he's obviously he's going to be moving to Manchester City most likely for like a hundred million pounds. So he's not that big of a deal anymore. But um, he's played like 115 minutes and he has in, the most assists for England and some of the. I think he actually has the most in the tournament. So um, he's a beast. Their story a little bit reminds me of Italy's story when we didn't qualify in 2018. Um, and we, you speak to Italians and, and you look deeper into it and they're all pissed off because they're not <laughs> developing homegrown talent in Syria. They're buying all these players from other countries to come in and play. And when you buy someone from Spain or Brazil or, or Germany to come play in Italy for your teams and your players aren't playing, they never develop. They don't play against quality talent. They start playing on, Seri- on Series B teams and you never get a good – you never get have a good national team. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just that's how soccer is. It's it's a lot different. I mean, it's a much different um, it's a much different perspective on how to build something uh, than it is here in the states where there's no unity. If you're on the Yankees, having I mean, there is a farm system, but you can basically bring in guys. You don't from choose. You, you don't want. choose to go there. Yeah, it has Unless nothing to like do with where you're from. Guy, and even then, it's limited international money with that. I mean, listen, they were they were more talented with the team heading into those World Cup qualifiers than they were in the last two Euros, honestly, and even the last yeah. World Cup. It's just they were just piggybacking off Pirlo and, you know, the defense. That's really what it was. It, it wasn't any talent like that, but they got the worst manager they ever could have had. And the, and the league's done a better job of forcing teams to have a certain amount of homegrown players from your youth academy and you also have to have a certain amount of Italian players on your team. Because if you don't, then, you know, what you were talking about happens, where a lot of guys don't get opportunities. Um, and then also it's just their infrastructure is terrible. There's, like, they're idiots out there. They're just very stubborn people that don't get – like, all these teams don't own their stadiums. There's two teams in Serie A that own their stadium. You saw your Nick, Yeah. So they, the they, always, they always rent – they always um oh really they're they're owned by like municipalities oh italians so they, love to rent that's for sure <laughs> i you're mean gonna get, you're not getting that check on the first or the fifth but <laughs> <laughs> go ask mike piazza about it if you ever saw it oh uh, i heard that with his wife right something crazy what happened? Yeah, yeah his wife was just like sitting there like her face wasn't moving because of all the botox and all that stuff and <laughs> he's just like <laughs> yelling and smashing every time i see him his hairline's just getting he's just holding on to it it's Poor like widow's speak i know it's miserable that's our guy but I mean, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know what else. Uh, so Marty, now I had a random question about the world cup. So mm-hmm. it's, so they're, it's play, they're playing it in Qatar, right? Next mm-hmm. year. But is it yeah, it's scheduled year. into being November? Yeah. Of what? November of 22? 22. Yeah. 
next next November. So you have to go through all like, next summer, and then that, and and is that like set in stone, or is it still up in the air? It's set in stone. That's been That's so stupid. Probably yeah, like in was. 2012. I mean, it's like the most corrupt thing like to ever <laughs> exist. Probably they they rigged all the votes. It's been on record and recorded by journalists that were like threatened to be killed. That there was. Two to three million dollars paid towards each voter for a country. So like someone represents like Saudi Arabia or Slovenia or whatever country like that. And they put in their vote to who they think should host the World Cup next go around. They paid them like two to three million per vote to vote for Qatar. Um, And then the way they built it is it's in the desert. They built a brand new city and it's billions of dollars worth of stuff. And they get people from like young kids from like 19, wow. 20 years old, like from Sri Lanka. Uh, who do you call it? Jeremy Shep did a whole thing on this mm-hmm. on E60. And these kids are going out there, thousands of them in the desert, building these stadiums, these, these rooms and stuff. And um, like hotels or, or, or like shops to, for people to go stay in like tourists and all this stuff. And the kids were dying of heart attacks um, in the great. extreme heat. It's like a, what? you know, it could be like up to 110 degrees um, they work from 9 a.m. to 9 at night. The Our rooms that they bail stay in. Out of this? Huh? Our team's going to bail out of this because of no, you know, they situations they like that? Like, you think, well, you what's think the weather they, like in Qatar in, in November? Yeah, it's, it it's, ridic- like, um, it's the coolest time yeah. that they could do it. And it kind of just like it's going to interrupt a lot of things. Like the season yeah. is going on in Europe at that time. So they got to figure in like, condensed schedule when they're able to go how they put these seasons on pause you know because sometimes in the mls they play during the world cup and some of these Mm -hmm. teams like lose all their top players so stuff like that changes um and that's like a lot of money involved for these clubs yeah because they depend on revenue for like champions league money that they get from the tvs and stuff but they have to put it in from november 15th to december 15th it's around then that's when it's going to be and i know selfishly like you know but you look at the American TV deals are huge and they're you're, amazing. you're <laughs> tapping into the middle of football season. Now, you know, the, the November to December push is the heart of the football season and you're going to have a hard time be during Thanksgiving. Especially, yeah. Like you have the casual soccer fans here are not going to skip out on, you know, Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays of football to watch, you know, the world cup, especially if the U S team is terrible, which they always well, the are. So, I mean, that's going to hurt time of those games too. I, I got to think the like U.S. The team looking. This is the most talented team they ever had, in my opinion. I heard that. Really? They definitely crazy. are. They definitely are. They have the most. They have the most ever Champions League players. Yeah. On their team, um, at, that they've ever had. Um, and don't listen to any like idiots that say like the teams from like 2006 or 2010 were better. They're not. They're just. They're just they're not even they're not even remotely close to what about that. the defense and the goalie? How, how, that was how a, well the defense, the two center backs are I don't like them that much. Jonathan Brooks is like their guy, but he's not he's not even a quality like he wouldn't start for a Champions League level team. So he's not even like that good. Um he's good for USA and what we expect. Mm-hmm. Um goalkeeper is probably their best. Um Zach Steffen's awesome. He's a backup at Man City. Um, Havrath was the other backup guy. He came in. If you guys saw that game against Mexico, you probably mm-hmm. probably got. You probably, Wait, um, so our goalkeeper's a backup on a, on a club team? A Man City, mm-hmm. yeah. Man well, City. Behind, though. What, what do you rather him? What do you rather him be playing? Yeah, that's though? what people. That's come what on. You want get. like competitive? Yeah. You want to be in competitive play? I I I'd rather someone be in competitive yeah. uh, play than be a backup on 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 one of the top teams. Mm-hmm. No, that's a, that's what a lot of people kind of have beef with. But I yeah. mean. They play but either, so many Man games. City is one of the top teams in the world. So I yeah, mean, and yeah. he plays behind a top five goalkeeper in the world. So he's never seen the field anyways. The only time is if it's like these stupid cup matches that England have just for money purposes, like ESPN Plus will like pick it up because people are tuning Jocker. in and all that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, that's, I mean, that's it. But I'm, I'm sure he'll leave eventually. I mean, he's got to in the next year or two because you, you're right. You can't just like – sit on the bench it's not yeah, a good not experience at all yeah all right before yeah. we let you go marty we're gonna get you out of here and go through some baseball stuff quick who is your <laughs> final who's the cup final uh two teams and winner final two teams italy versus denmark just because i don't like england um <laughs> and then italy will win it i've said italy right. was gonna win this one since like 2018 i'm a sicko wow. like that 
Um, I said the same thing with France before they won it, but um, I didn't bet on them. I ended up betting on Brazil like an idiot, so I went back on my word. Um, but I think Italy will. Um, I just think they're a better team. But uh, That's the rule with betting. Whenever you're yeah. confident with something in your heart, you don't put money on it. Then you overthink something, and you think you can analyze it yeah. right, and you're always wrong. It's That's yeah. the life of, it's, uh, yeah. of, it's a lose, lose, of anyone lose. who bets. Yeah, literally. All right, Martino. Ci vediamo, amico. <laughs> Domani alle tre. Let's do it, all right? Yeah. All right. Cut their heads off. See you, dude. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no Later, problem. Dude.